If you can still see your screen, place your Spectrum Light Pen Sucker in position when the software circle appears. But first, microdrive or disk drive. 1985 will be the year when cheap personal computers begin to open up a new mass market. People who were put off by the image of toy micros, but couldn't afford thousands for professional systems, will now be turning to the new Atari range, the cheap Sanyo business computers, or perhaps the Sinclair QL. But cheap as these are, the cost can almost double if you buy disk drives, and they're essential for all serious computing. Sinclair say they have a solution, the controversial microdrive, and we think it's time for a closer look at what they claim. The Sinclair Microdrive is a marvel of small-scale engineering, all fitting into this area. It began life as an add-on for the Spectrum, but has been re-engineered for the QL and the one per desk. It's an endless loop of videotape revolving at high speed. There's about 100k of storage on each cartridge, and access times are quite fast, but it's by no means as good as a floppy disk system. On this QL, we have Quill, the word processor, loaded from Microdrive. And here we have it loaded from the Quest floppy disk drive. Let's load the help file on each and see which is the fastest. So I press function one on each one, and you can see they're both, both now loading the help file. The disk drive is considerably faster and it holds more information as well. The micro drive is, is still loading, and there it is, about a 12 second add-on time. So why would anybody want to use micro drives? David Carlin, welcome to the program. So that's really the first question. Why did Sinclair develop the microdrive system rather than going for a cheaper disk drive? Well, there are a few reasons. Firstly, we wanted a system that was much more compact. A whole QL with microdrives weighs about half of what the Quest floppy disk system alone weighs, and the cartridges themselves are far more portable and they're far more robust. But the main reason is that we wanted a system that was going to be much cheaper. The microdrive costs us about a sixth to put into a computer of the cost of the cheapest floppy disk drive we could have bought. So cost really was the overriding factor? Uh, yes, that's right. But nonetheless, the microdrive can only store up to about a 100k in terms of either a data file or a program, and that's really limiting for sort of some of the larger database files. It certainly is limiting for the larger database files, and for that reason, I'm sure that there will be many people who do buy disk drives for their QLs. However, it's more than adequate for many uses. Um, it's certainly a good way to start computing, and there are many people who would never need more storage. So you admit that there will be people who will start off at the microdrive level and yet upgrade to sort of use disk drives later on? There certainly will be, but then there will be also many who don't need to. Now, what about the software? So far, we've really only seen the sort of the Cyan range of software, and that's without the nice exchange feature that I showed a few weeks ago. What other software is coming? Well, it's taken a little while, but there is now a lot of new software coming out for the QL, um, mainly oriented towards the small business. There is a lot of accountancy software, and it's all fairly easy to use. Um, what I'd like to show you is my own favorite, which is a program used for planning projects. Um, what it does is to do what's called critical path planning. Um, it tells me what activities are vital to the success of a project and how long I have spare on the ones where there is a little bit of time and it plots a bar chart of those activities. Okay, so that's another new piece of software that will soon be on the market. Yes, that's right. What about the Cyan range of software? Is there now an upgrade available for that? There is an upgrade available for Cyan which has gone out to all people who are members of the QL Users Bureau and will also be going out with all new QLs from now and that is considerably faster than the old version. A question I must ask is, what about the reliability of the microdrive? How does it stand up to disk drive reliability? Well, I think that now microdrives are very close to the reliability of disk drives. We did have some problems early on, but then anyone who'd bought a disk system three or four years ago could tell you some real horror stories. Um, those problems are now over, and the microdrives we're shipping are very good. Now, don't you think it's giving you, in some ways, an enormous marketing problem in starting off with a microdrive? Because in people's minds, they think, you know, microdrive equals some kind of cassette system, equals some kind of toy computer. So in terms of penetrating the business market, aren't you setting yourself a, a problem there? 
It is a problem. I think we simply have to make people realize that the microdrive is a useful medium, that it offers a, a compromise of price and performance that is unequaled by any of our competitors and by any floppy disk system. And obviously we have to put that message across. Um, I hope that pieces of software like the one that I've shown you will show people that you really can use microdrives and that they will work on quite large sized applications. And you're obviously going forward to develop new and other things both to fit into the QL and other pieces. Yes, we certainly are, but okay. uh, you should ask Clive about those next week. Okay, well thank you very much David. As David says, next week Sir Clive Sinclair will be with us, so if you have any questions about either the Spectrum or the QL, then why not drop us a line on our Prestel mailbox or send us a message through the bulletin board. That's right, do just that. Also, press the space bar on your Spectrum machines if you're taking the light software because we're going to be transmitting it.